the way that the world is happening today, we have to all come together to try to relate some of these concepts to the people that are still asleep. We do not go and wake them up abruptly because all we have to do is to, to shake them up one at a time and pretty soon they'll come to, to the conclusion that you know they have a purpose in life. I have been working at this program for a number of years. My first 60, 65 years was in the, in the engineering profession. And I thought that when I went into the medicine order when I was a young boy, I thought that why do I need to know anything about the ancient stuff because that no longer applies anymore. Look at the world today and we are now in a modern age. We're in the atomic age. We're in the scientific age. Until I graduated from the engineering school taking all the high order physics, the mathematics, the, and then I realized that all this stuff that was, I was, it was always at home. I did not realize that our people had the advanced knowledge of things that I had just barely scratched the surface in the world of academia. And so when I started working together, these two groups, I found out that we're all talking about the same thing in several different, the ends of different spectrum. So, so I immediately found out the teachings of my grandmothers, my grandfathers, and my elders that they were speaking in a language that is only, is only common to us, but they were actually talking about advanced systems. In this day and age, we're going through a very, very fast change throughout the world. We are looking for a lot of different ways to grasp a lot of the concepts that have been known to us for centuries, if not thousands of years. And so, uh, so when I started working with these, with these groups, I found out that the people are very hungry for this knowledge. They are very interested in what the American Indian and other ab aboriginal tribes throughout the planet have known for thousands and thousands of years. There, in every continent on the planet, there are groups, they call them the aborigines, the people in Africa, the people in Australia, the people in Europe, even the, both the, the ice caps, have known this for many, many years and now is the time to stop, look, and listen. We have been sort of sat on the sidelines for many, many years when all these other things were happening. We don't look at things in, in a negative way because what good will it do? That is the past. And we do not blame anybody. It's just part of the whole process of what is happening in the world. So it is my privilege to be here today with you folks to at least pass on some of the information that I was uh, taught by my grandmothers, my grandfathers, my elders, and now the new group called the Star Children. The Star Children are the most advanced little people on the planet. Some of them as young as three years old can talk to me in such a manner that it just blows my mind. And so this is why <clears throat> we have to also look at those, the, the generations, the, the Lakota people talk about the seventh generation. That's how advanced we look to our future. In the Pueblo world, we leave the knowledge 
and we train the people that will take care of our our uh, world in the future. So this is where we are now at this stage in our lives here. It has been some doing for a number of years, especially in this country, that has really destroyed our Mother Earth. We have not respected our Mother Earth for at least 500 years. The pre-Columbian times, this used to be called a pristine age where everything was only taken for their own particular use. We never took more and all the, all the different things on the planet had spirit, whether it was a tree, whether it was a plant, whether it was an animal. They all had spirit. We all have now recognized that this spirituality has become the most utmost thing that will help us to gain a lot of control within our environment, within our, with our people, and also with the future of this planet. Mother Earth has provided us with many, many good things. The most important one is water. Look what we're doing with the water. Look what we are doing with the, the mining operations, the, the whole uh, things that we are taking out of our mother and using it for other purposes rather than for the good. So it is now the time to change our direction because it's never too late. And some of the, the things that we're, we're going through right now and this is what, why you are here. You are the leaders of that movement. You are what we call the light workers. We are, we are what we call the ones that are going to take this forward and to make sure that everything comes back to a balance. We have been out of balance for many, many years. And so, therefore... We have to look at ways to come back into a middle ground or into the, the balance. Everything is always in balance. You got the light, you got the dark, and, he, and the others call it the yin and the yang. And we also call it the plus and the minus. And we have deviated from that for so long. It is not my purpose, again, to look at things in a negative way because those things we cannot go back and fix. We are not time travelers. We are now here to correct those things that to proceed in the future. I come from a, a Pueblo culture, the Zuni culture. We celebrate the, the solstices, the summer and the winter. Right now in my community, we have gone through prayers in the last 10 days, getting ready for our, the return of our ancestors, the ones that went before us. We have provided them with prayers. We have provided them <clears throat> with rituals. And they have come to our village and, and also what we call the Kachina people. To others, they call them the angels. We also have the spirit people that are situated or their domains are throughout the universe and also on parts of the planet. They are all there and ready for celebrations, just like we are here for celebration, to connect with each other, to reconnect our resources and our thoughts and our minds to make sure that we are all on the same path. In home, at home, we will go through the rituals of prayer. We will go through the chanting of songs, the singing of songs and its celebration. And of course, the best part is when we eat. So everything is a feast over there. So that uh, 
I have been involved with it so for many, many years in that. And now it is time for the expansion to celebrate with each other of all of us that are here. You are all my brothers. You are all my sisters. You are my children. Same way as we are here with our, our ancestors that went before us, the star system people, the different people that are from different parts of the universe are here collectively. And we are all here for celebration. And this is why we are supposed to be happy and we're supposed to celebrate and to rejuvenate the earth and to make each other, with, meet each other with joy, make new friendships, renew the same ones that we have known each other for years. And this is what is gone for a, for a long time. Now I have uh, attended a lot of these type of disclosure meetings we, this is one organization that I am involved with 100%. The folks that run this disclosure effort are the best in, in the world. I have been with them now for at least five years. And uh, I have now at the age where I have the ability to choose who I want to be with. And, I, and sometimes I can be kind of mean. <laughs> but when the message is, is there, I will support that type of effort. Now see, the, uh, the other thing too that, that I talk about in a lot of these meetings is that <clears throat> we talk about, I talk about medicine practices. The, we all have in our, in our possession each one of you here in your medicine bags as an ingredient, it is called laughter. You have to do that. Laughter is the best medicine. When I first saw that when I was a young boy reading the Reader's Digest, it struck me real funny because I asked my, my uh, elders, he said, what do they mean by laughter is the best medicine? He said, well, just go to the next meeting of all the elders or the, all the people and say, what do you hear? He said, nothing but laughter. <laughs> so this is good medicine. So this is why we are here to enjoy the atmosphere, the energies that are given by many different sources from the earth, from the cosmos, from other people. We use that to strengthen our energies and we also pass it on to other folks that are not here with us physically. So this is why it is very great to be with you here. And I see that uh, there's a lot of nations that are, are represented here. This is, again, this is my first time here and I really enjoy the things that we, that I have seen this morning, and we are always on the same path. I have been observing for a long time, many, many different places, and this is one of the most exciting things that I have ever seen is when people get together with one common thing is to be together as one. And this is why we are a big family. We have to learn how to get all our family together and get to know each other and exchange the joy, the happiness, and the future relationship that will exist from this point on. Now, You are also, we also have a job to do. I thought that I was going to retire, lay under a tree, and uh, look at the stars and not do anything. 
I had a friend that I worked with for many years. He was a younger man than me, and I told him before I left, I said, all my my people that I work with, I told him, I said, I'm gonna, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to go home. I'm going to retire, and I'm going to lay, lay there every morning for the rest of my life. And the guy looked at me and said, hey, Cliff, I give you two weeks maximum. <laughs> I, said, I said, why is that? He said, you're not happy until you make somebody angry. <laughs> so I have been, I, I tell a lot of stories about my background. Uh, I, I always tell the teachers, I say, when I meet teachers, I tell them that, you know, I said, I was a favorite among all my teachers when I was a little boy in school. I said, I always had a desk in front of the teacher. They, they always loved me. And uh, I didn't realize at that time that the reason that they had my desk in front of the teachers for another reason. But anyway, this is what makes life so good. We all have experiences. We all have good times. We know about those things. I have never, ever thought about anything. Even in my worst times, I've always laughed about it. And again, that is good medicine. When I laugh about it, the people think I'm crazy. I have been, but this is what makes the world such a joyful place to be. This is life. Life is what you make of it. And don't ever be scared. Don't ever say that I'm not going to do this. Because if, if anybody thinks they were, they're not going to have any fun. So anyway, we all are, have gone through our little situation. I'm sure that some of you have worse ones than I did. <laughs> but anyway, it's a great life. So anyway, that's why I'm here. I am very happy to see all you people here. <clears throat> I, am, uh, I usually open the pr uh, my meetings with prayer. But in, I think that... Uh, how much time do I have left, Michelle? Huh? 30. 30 minutes? 40 minutes? You mean I have to talk some more? You can just tell us jokes. Huh? You can tell us jokes. No, I don't. <laughs> it's, it's against my contract. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they might, you know, they might censure my jokes. <laughs> no, uh, no, I think the... The other thing, too, that I always talk about is that we have many, many paths that made us to where we are at. You know, when I talk about being, being the, not like the same kind, you know, we were always rejected in a way. We have always been not, we never belong to any group. And now I know the reason why, because... You guys were different. You guys did not go along with, with the group. So this is what makes this whole thing about disclosure is that the whole people that are involved with it, they are the ones that will be leading us to, to the truth. I always like to get that, that phrase from A Few Good Men. Remember in that movie? where it says, you can't handle the truth. But I think it's copyrighted, so I can't do that. But anyway, so this is what <clears throat> this is all about. I see a lot of people that are here. They have, uh, it's been a, a rejuvenation of some of the things that have been lost for a long time, uh, especially in the, the com combination of mind, spirit, body, soul, and we also now are relating to things that have been sort of put back, something that was not, not to be talked about. So this is why I'm very, very glad that some of us have been, been uh, informed about these certain things that we are here.
So anyway, the other thing too that I talk about is is what is happening to Mother Earth when I touched on it a while ago. There has always been the spirit people that have always guarded these places. You've heard of vortices. You've heard of sacred sites. They are now appearing all over the world. Not only from the sky people, but also in the world that have been kept quiet for a long time. And uh, some people call them UFOs, some people call them paranormal. And next month at the end of August, or, or rather at the end of August, I will be at a spiritual Bigfoot conference. That's another group that has been very active. The other thing too that is becoming active is the ones, the space people that have been here, the ETs that have been here in the planet, uh, those are the ones that advance mankind. They're now coming out and teaching us. There, there are some young people that also have the direct connection to it. When I was leaving yesterday from Phoenix, I got a call from the folks up in Albuquerque. There's a mountain called Sandia Mountain. They have always existed there for thousands of years. And uh, there's many other places throughout the Southwest that are now appearing almost on a nightly basis. The place I'm from is called Zuni, New Mexico. It's near the Four Corners area. Every night there are UFO activity. And our, our spiritual leaders have said that they are now active to participate in getting the world to get it all fixed up. They have been waiting for us, but we're, we're sort, of, sort of lagging behind, so they're actively seeking that. The star children are now the ones that are going to take over. And they're the ones that will give us that information in how to proceed with it. These are some of the information that I don't get off the internet. These are the ones that are given to me directly. Uh, and so it's really an interesting thing that uh, I was told that this would happen. Even the animals come in. But there's a lot of different strange animals that are appearing. Whether they're real or three-dimensional, I do not know. But so this is happening all over the planet. I'm not trying to make you think that this is something that is scary or anything like that. It's just going to happen. It's part of the disclosure effort. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to touch on what, what the politicians are doing because that's not, part of our, that's not part of our thing to do because uh, we, are, we only are aware of what's happening, but they're not going to win. I can uh, I can assure you that. So that uh, that is what I do. I have a lot of people within the networking thing. The phrase I mean the the places that I go, we have become in a very big group now. And again, you are part of that group. So therefore, I would like to at this time. Say a prayer in my Zuni language. And I will explain to you what I said after I get through. Malese te anan ne, luke yaton ne, ho na yato ketachu, ho tante sa shine kui, imona te chipa, ho na to awona eletika, ho ma sa shina, we hom chawe hom ianikina leo kashamate hokan up kuna. Homata chumoya chu ashuani, ona yana kashuani, koko ashuani, wema apisa shuani, koko temsana, nato lesi tequi, yam ton tina and sakato, no, one as quake and hona ton aona elatanaopa. Akion even you het on a national, on the amawitel in sitta, yatin at umekanao, ana ton tequi ishamat the kets and the shi yasho ekoxi. Ianik and a goxi on semequiatic and quadak can say McTen Ate con Aute Lama, Honaton Sapana. No, look at Yatona Yamyato Ketachu and Onayanak Oneas and Quinequa, Homata Chu, 
What I said that it is time of our Father Son at its highest peak. That uh, we have prayed for you all this, the winter, the sun, and now you have met us. And also that I also address the ones that went before us, that are with us. The various gods throughout the universe, we call them the, <clears throat> the medicine gods. The Kachina people. The Kachina people are the ones that bring the rain to the southwest. And also the ones that, the, uh, the different beings that guard the different parts of the sacred places throughout the world. Whether they be at the pyramids, whether they be in the oceans, whether they be up in the mountains, whether they be up in the ancient cities that are now coming, coming into view, they are all, all here, all together with us. And I ask for their guidance. And also for the future of us, we will always be together in good, good thoughts, good language, with compassion, love, joy, happiness. That's all we talk about when we do our medicine practice. So this is what I ask them to give us their blessings as a long life, <clears throat> the wealth, children, strength, and the ability to know the difference of many different things that will come before us. And I ask them to give us those blessings to all of us that are here and to be with you for the rest of your lives and your journeys. So this is why I have asked them, and may you be blessed with all the different spiritual thoughts that are within you and to be always be aware of the spirit world and especially your ancestors that went before you, your brothers, your sisters, your fathers, your mothers, and so on. And so they are here with us today and they are very happy. Thank you very much. <laughs>